Hi everybody, I'm a social from the Center in the Netherlands. And um, yeah, so, so I'm going to give you a little bit of background about uh, the, the land publications that we made for the uh, weekend from the 25 data set. And, and, and I'll start with a little bit how we got involved with this. And um, yes, so actually, um, Link and I, and I can really commend them for that, uh, are really um, interested in sharing their data, I think, as, as widely and as open as possible once they do the, the full release. And they have been, I think, searching for the right way or uh, yeah, the best ways to do that. And they recognize that there's a difference between, I think, what uh, biologists um, need, so they need interfaces, they need uh, tools that they can and use, and what maybe bioinformaticians need to need, you know, uh, sort of uh, machine access to this kind of data. And this is also where uh, non publications uh, come in. Um, so I uh, did this work together with the people here in my group. And um, yes, yeah, so, so the start is we have this great data set, right? So we have all this uh, sequencing data, all this um, you know, wide range of data, and um, how to release that now is the question. Well, when we started this work, I think uh, something like one half year ago, uh, there was, I think, uh, only the, the full uh, download of the set as common separated files as a, as a preview. And, uh, yeah, there was the, the start of the, this kind of semantic media wiki, uh, which we looked into, and, and then we saw, yeah, it's good, it provides a nice interface, you know, abilities to do that. But um, the semantic modeling behind it, so if you want to do releases on the semantic web, is, is not so strong. So we, uh, at, at that time, at least, so what we did was um, uh, we did some of this modeling when we made our non publication. So, what is a. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so um, in this way we could help each other because we were looking for uh, la large experimental, uh, sort of large data sets that we could try our non publication technology on, and, and they. Uh, they had this data, so a good cooperation. So what is an application? So it's it's the smallest unit of publishable knowledge, that's what we say. And um, it consists of a, a single assertion, um, which if you know semantic web or idea, um, um, in our case means that it doesn't have to be one triple, it can be multiple triples if you need that to express what you want to say. But we recommend that you keep the assertion as small as possible. And importantly, um, this is linked, let's say not separately, from uh, its provenance data. And this is important for knowing, you know, can I trust this data? Um, and uh, what is the attribution? So which people work on this data and deserve attribution of this data? Um, so, as I said, it's, uh, it's not a publication, it's just uh, semantic web technology, precisely it's, it's, it's a schema. Um, so, we reuse a lot of the um, semantic web stuff, so as much as possible the anthologies, the um, categories uh, that are out there. And, yeah, um, if you look at the schema, actually, it's really very simple. So, we define an application as a schema like this. So, if the assertion, um, usually if that's some kind of associative data or maybe a, a claim, actually anything the author wants to express in a small and concise as possible uh, representation. Then the, there's provenance. Um, for this, of course, uh, there are existing ontologies out there to, to, to uh, model that. For example, the prof recently uh, sort of officially released prof prof ontology. And the publication information, which is called the attribution. And the only thing actually um, we add on top of that is this, uh, what we call the integrity, which is a cryptographic hash, which is executed on the data publication, and it's three uh, subgraphs, um, <coughs> which make sure that once this uh, non publication URL plus its integrity key are published somewhere, you know and you can always verify that when you um, access the, the, the data and the graphs behind the URL, it hasn't been changed. So it's 
think about when you're publishing a traditional article. Um, after your release, it's there. You can't update it anymore. And um, yeah, you have to live with that. And it also means that for now publications, there are no real updates. Um, if you want, for example, because later you have a new insight about the statement that you made, um, if you want to publish that, then it becomes a new nano publication. Um, for example, that one refers to the old nano publication, uh, where you say, yeah, we don't do this anymore. Oh, we don't claim this anymore because uh, there was an error in our methodology. Our systems were not working. So, so. so why do this nano publication? So, so we want data that's machine readable and, and interoperable, um, not central, so not. not um, tie it into one particular database, um, something that you can cite and, and track. So that, that's important for people to receive attribution for the data that they created. And also, don't forget, um, it's important for people who curate data to be able to attach their name to the data that they curated. So we're very much trying to push <coughs> people who, uh, let's say, systems that curate data to release curation efforts as, as non publications as well. Yeah, so, so in this sense, uh, we think map is a very good model for uh, the ranking data. So when we were doing this, actually we learned, uh, when we were doing this case study with Dyken, um, we, we learned a nice sort of workflow for uh, producing map publications for large data sets. So in this case, um, in the end, of all the data is sort of derived from the sequencers and the subsequent uh, uh, processing of the data. So what we have is, is database and performance data. And the path towards nano publications, as we uh, experienced it, is now what we recommend that um, in the first step you define uh, or you're looking for sort of entities and ontologies that you want to use for the database, uh, so the actual data, and your, your profile, so your metadata. Um, the result of this um, can be described in, in RDF. So for example, with uh, uh, the void um, ontology to, to say vocabulary of internet data, which allows you to present your data set together with the header to describe that data set. Um, but for nano publication, we say this can be modeled very lightly. So it can be just a, almost a literal translation of, of, the, of the, the data set, for example, the, the, the data table that you're talking about. Because then in the next step, um, we extract, extract from that the assertional uh, knowledge. And um, th this is a step I'll go into a little bit later also that requires some, some thinking. Because you have, like when you write a paper, you have to think about you know, what is my assertion, what am I really saying? Um, so that's not per se an automatic process, but anyway, a very valuable thing to do. And then from that, uh, you uh, model your non I will show you a little bit about how to do that. So, um, I'll go over this very quickly. So, so um, first we made this uh, vocabulary interlinked data um, description, and again, with sort of very um, few modeling effort in it, but at least it allows you to point, let's say, uh, to every data item that you have in the data set uh, by an IDF uh, resource URL. And then we want to make that publication. So we now want to define these sort of three components uh, of the, uh, the nano publication. So what is the challenge here? <laughs> so um, well, first is that you have to get straight for yourself what is the actual uh, observation and what is the interpretation of that, and which one of these two am I actually trying to release, and how do I model it? Then specifically for the nano publication you have to think about uh, what is the separation between my assertion, so my, my core statement, and, and what is provenance, what, what, you know, what do people uh, want to know sort of right off the uh, bat when they see this non-publication, and, and what is extra information that is available, for example, for uh, machine readable uh, uh, algorithm, let's say for algorithms and, and uh, machine processing, but which is sort of um, uh, in the only provenance of the application. And uh, there's always some sort of general uh, 
issues that you can have with uh, data modeling in RDF. So, um, defining these, uh, uh, well, for Horizon actually, uh, we, we concluded that we want these three types of math publications. And uh, yeah, I'm not going into detail, but there was a sort of lot of discussion uh, to define exactly how what these resources should be, so they change a little bit from the initial plan to what you find in the model. So this is what it looks like in, in RDF. Uh, I'll highlight the, uh, the different components of the nano publication. Um, I won't expect you to, to see a lot of detail here, but this is how it looks in, in RDF. Uh, so the, the, the graph is brought out. Uh, again, you can see the different components here. Um, I'll go over this very quickly. So these are the details. Uh, I just want to point out that these, uh, uh, the, the, the attribution is very important. Here it's very simple, but it can be extended so that you can really say uh, attribute uh, who did what for this data set and make sure that uh, people have an incentive also to work hard on the curation of the data set because they will always, uh, through the method of this link data, always be able to uh, be found as, as authors. Currently, the, the provenance modeling that we did for the right and left is quite small. Uh, and I hope during this uh, hackathon, maybe we can work together with people to, to get more details about their processing so that we can uh, make it a better model. So, uh, this is a slide with the um, sort of modeling that we did for the assertion of this NATO publication. Um, I, I just want to say that, that it was not. Um, a trivial process in this case we found that um, because we want to refer to specific, yeah, we have reference sequences and we see that they're often not um, modeled uh, in, in a correct way. So, so we did some modeling ourselves to um, have a, uh, yeah, a good model for capturing the, the reference sequence and to make this also uh, transferable across uh, this uh, to make. The implementation that we're basically doing um, transferable across different reference sequences, and this is uh, not a very easy problem to solve. So um, we, we made an authority for that, and by an authority, uh, such an taking sheet, uh, we'll present that as the, uh, the boss conference at uh, ISM. Um, so again, this is a kind of graph where, where it shows that, uh, which components we used for the provenance. Modeling, and um, I'm just saying that here actually we could actually reuse a lot of the uh, uh, existing models. So we only have to define our uh, uh, sort of uh, sorry. We only have to define uh, this destroyed data set. Uh, we we made that very quickly, of course, maybe one day work. And um, for the rest, we could reuse ontologies, including the uh, uh, cell type uh, ontology that uh, um, was mentioned in the previous uh, talk. So, um, so what, what's currently happening with now publications? So, it's uh, it's now publication being uh, applied in the Facts project, which is a, a big. Um, drug discovery uh, project based on uh, let's say semantic web technologies. And within this frame, uh, within this project we are uh, creating now publication data sets, uh, putting our experiences down as guidelines which will evolve into a now publication standard. And we um, build infrastructure for dealing with now publications, also some user interface, uh, some tools for people to more easily create the now. So, um, we have a community website also, now that we've worked. I'm afraid it's a little bit outdated now because we have trouble, uh, so many things are, are happening at, for now on the page right now that it's hard to, uh, to keep that. every, for example, uh, example that, that we put on this website to keep that up to date. Um, but uh, this is sort of the, the place where we do that. And um, there we see that, that there's uh, more and more people who are thinking about and applying uh, technologies similar to, to nano publications, but sometimes with this slight variant. So 
to manage cooling, we produced nanocomplications for uh, more natural, yeah, you know, I'll wrap up, uh, for natural language, which uh, saves you a little bit of the modeling effort, but yeah, at the cost of sort of symmetric capability. There's micro publications and uh, overpub, uh, uh, which is uh, another uh, sort of schema for small publications, uh, which has some, some other benefits. So, and um, this is a, it's getting to be a large community, and in recent years, we, we, we call this community the, the, the Nano Republic, and uh, all these partners, which are uh, either academic or industry, uh, we want to bring them together and um, to sort of set up this, uh, uh, basically, community where we develop this idea for the NAM applications further. And perhaps um, we, we set up a W3C community group to make an official standard. And uh, that, I think that would be a very good uh, result for that. <coughs> so, so uh, there's also a very interesting startup company, I think it's called uh, Doritos, that's um, uh, using NAM publications at the core of a very interesting system. They, they call it the uh, Bio Relations and Intelligence Network, which basically uh, takes information from a lot of data set, uh, sources, which can be RDF or can be uh, NAM publications, uh, computes relationships over, uh, finds the entities in that set, and tries to extrapolate new uh, relationships. And then you get something like this, where you have a brain with a sort of analytical side, which knows stuff, and um, recognizes concepts and that kind of stuff, and, and a right brain, a creative side, that <coughs> makes predictions about what concepts could occur. And in our group, we have some experience with that, for protein-protein uh, interactions to take uh, PubMed abstracts and predict um, new protein interactions that uh, uh, can later be validated in a, in a web lab experiment. So now publications are then the basis, the basic um, data exchange um, system uh, um, for, for this brain network. Okay. So to close, uh, I think uh, um, I'll, I'll talk to a lot of you for a second. Time. And I'm specifically interested to talk about uh, for, to be less about hosting these now publications uh, that, that we made, which is a very large data set. Um, talk with people about interoperability issues and, and, and other publications and to talk about with uh, writing about how we can extend the provenance model for this other publication. Thank you. If you have any questions, let me know.